Okay, well, good evening and welcome to our evening service. I um, uh, welcome everyone here. I also want to welcome those by way, via video. Uh, last week's video didn't make it on the system because I completely messed it up. And uh, so today is the official mark of our videoing the evening service so that it works. It's not the sound booth people's fault. It was my fault. And uh, what I did is I accidentally deleted it. <clears throat> so, <laughs> oops, yes, that's right, oops. And when you delete it, it's nowhere to be found again unless you preach it again. And uh, I didn't look at the computer here at the church, but uh, uh, anyways. Um, I want to... Uh, I got all these things flashing before me here. I want to get this all up and running here. I uh, had an epiphany to today, uh, this week, and actually a, again this afternoon. Uh, I was going to do the foundations of creation of Christ, and I preached a, preached a, a, a message this morning that really convicted my heart about uh, our need of um, Christ as our Savior. We need to understand that uh, God is real, that it's not a myth mythical character that some people portray him as. And, uh, and it got me thinking that the Creation of Christ series is really good. However, I want to be able to have a little bit more freedom in the evening service to maybe preach on a topic or a book of the Bible that maybe is not as big. That uh, series would have taken us through a year, and, uh, which is great.
Uh, but I really felt there were some other themes that I wanted to really uh, push uh, and, and preach on. And one of them uh, is the greatness of God and the sovereignty of God. Big, big, big words. And uh, so if you, I apologize if you really wanted to hear here. And it's sad, but it's also beautiful. Everything that we have. You're driving down the road in your car. Have you ever thought who, you know, the design of a car and the engineers who designed this and, and all the work that went into getting this car so you can go from here to the grocery store and back? Oh, but you know how much it cost us for gas. Oh, gas is so expensive. Be, 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 be. be thankful you have a vehicle to get you to where you need to go because there's a lot of people in this world that have to walk. And so I say to you, ever wonder about the creation around us and the things that we have? The more we think we know about the Lord and His wonderfulness and what He's done for us and what He's created for us, the more and more we know that we're just humble little people. One of the things the Bible points out is that demonstrate the greatness of God is the creation around us. So the next time you complain that you have to shovel the snow <laughs> or cut the grass, Think about the fact that we have four seasons. There's so many positive things. It's easy for me to say that because half the time I'm not home when it snows. <laughs> We've looked at the importance of God's greatness for His children, or for the Christian. You know, when we begin to focus on God's greatness, it causes us to realize that He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Whatever's going on in your life right now, God has a plan. Yeah, but I'm getting tired of going through this pain and this sickness and, and these problems and these people and these things. Yes, but God's brought that in your life to help grow you, to make you trust Him more. Because God is great. And I suggest you that God is greater than any problem. Greater than all our fears. I was on a plane that was going to Abbotsford one day. And from the time that we took off from the Calgary airport to just about landing, it was cloudy. And the individual sitting beside me, it's about an hour flight. It's just over an hour flight. We took off, got above the clouds. You know, that's beautiful. You got all these clouds underneath. But then he had to come down, right? Because we got to come. Abbotsford's not Vancouver, so you gotta, you're like gotta, you're on this side. And down, 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 down. Clouds. Clouds right up to the window. This is what you saw is clouds. And usually, uh, I grew up uh, with family in the Mission Abbotsford area. When you see, come down on the plane to Abbotsford, you can see the Fraser River and, the, and Sumas Mountain and Harrison Lake and, uh, as, he, as he goes down, because they come down, 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 then they turn around Sumas Mountain, and then he turns this way and he, he lands in the Abbotsford Airport. Cloud, 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 cloud. There was, we did not see any ground until he just about touched his tires. And the guy beside me was losing it. Because he thought that he, this, he was, he was, at one point I thought he was going to throw up, so I pulled a bag and I handed it to him. And he goes, no, he says, I'm going to faint. I says, well, breathe into the bag then. So he did this. And, and he looks at me and says, how come, you're not, how come you're not afraid? Well, I had a chance there to tell him the four spiritual laws and tell him I had Jesus in my life. I said, I've been on this flight enough to know that this is normal. <laughs> the, fire, the, police, uh, police, the pilots are 
strictly working off their elements, off their, this, what's in front of them. Nothing. There's nothing they can do. They have to follow this. If it says drop it two feet, they've got to drop it two feet. There is nothing whatsoever that they can do. If they start to play around with it, we're going to get killed. And the guy goes, wow. And I said, isn't technology cool? And he goes, just get me off this. And he used some flowery language, this plane. And, uh, and as I was walking off the plane, the pilot goes, hey, how you doing? I said, that was a dandy one today. He goes, you should have been here yesterday. <laughs> the, 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 for the fog, landing in the fog. It was something else. You know what? God is great. Think about it. He made those instrument panels. He helped those people, those pilots, not lose their cookies as they came down. You see, the greatness, the result of looking at the greatness of God and the wonder of creation, the importance of God's greatness for the Christians, the fact that people need to see the importance of God's greatness for the sinner. Regardless of whether the sinner realizes it or not, or acknowledge it, they are hopelessly lost. There is nothing the sinner can do to save himself or keep himself out of hell. We were talking before we went on uh, line here with the video about uh, a gentleman in our church sharing the gospel, a little bit of the gospel while they were uh, hanging out somewhere. And, and the person, uh, they had a, a conversation about, um, uh, you know, a bit, what, how did it go again? It was, what? Yeah, it was about faith. And uh, do we put faith in God or faith in the church, right? In Christ, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and, and he explained to her, or this person, that we put our faith in Christ, not in an institution. And I thought that was really, really cool. Um, Ecclesiastes 8.8 8 says, No man has power to retain the Spirit, or power over the day of death. There is no discharge from war, nor will wickedness deliver those who are given to it. You see, sin is a cruel taskmaster, and its reward is eternal separation from the Lord. However, God's greatness to the sinner is amazing. Isaiah 45, verse 22 says, Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. You see, God's call for salvation is universal. The Lord is so great that if people will simply look to Him in faith, and look to Him in prayer, He is able. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank You for the opportunity I've had of sharing the Word of God here this evening. And I pray, Father, for those who are watching by way of video, that if they don't know Christ as their personal Savior, that they will reach out and phone me or email me or WhatsApp me, whatever way that we can communicate and talk and help them see their need and lead them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity we have of understanding how great you really are. Father, thank you for the salvation that we have. If it wasn't for our salvation, we wouldn't even be here today. If it wasn't for the, even the aspect of salvation, we wouldn't even have a church facility today. And so, Father, thank you. Help us to see things around us in a far more...